Before we get into the meat and potatoes of what we're doing in today's video, I want to show you guys a little bit of a project that I worked on in between videos. I went over to Lowe's and I just picked up a little piece of sheet metal and I ended up making up making this uh, block off plate for the firewall. I figured this will be like a little less bulky than the stock like cow piece that sits there. And I'm hoping it'll make working on things on the engine closer back to the firewall a little bit easier since we won't have that big piece of like plastic overhanging everything. Today is gonna be a bit of a bigger video though. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get out this front subframe, give it a good clean, give it some fresh paint so it's looking nice and fresh and make it a lot more pleasant to work on later on. And then hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get the M52 in the car today. Thankfully, with the engine out of here, getting this front subframe out is going to be an absolute piece of cake. We just got two bolts on each side. We have the two bolts for the lollipops in the rear, and then we just have the nuts holding in the struts on either side. So like I said, hopefully this should go pretty smooth. I should have expected that one to happen. Nice. Should I have gone about this a slightly different way? Yeah, probably. But we're here and it's happening. Oh. Oh. I missed a very crucial step. Oh no. Fuck. Oh, I might have just fucked up bad. How did I forget that? I forgot to disconnect the brake calipers. All right, crisis averted. You know, I've been racking my brain the last few nights because I feel like I've been forgetting something. If you guys remember the last drift event that I drove the TI at, we had a bit of a failure and that failure ended up being a busted brake line, which led to this happening. So really, the fact that this all got hung up by the brake lines reminded me I need to order new brake lines. So really, this was all kind of a blessing in disguise. So with all that taken care of now, we can actually, we can actually drop this thing. <laughs> Subframe's out. Alrighty, so I got the entire front subframe all disassembled. Uh, I've had this stuff soaking in degreaser for a while. I really wasn't happy with how a lot of these bolts were looking. They're all pretty rusty and they were, a lot of them were a pain to get out. So I ran over to Harbor Freight, got some of this evapo rust. They say this stuff works in seconds, but I'm probably just gonna end up leaving it overnight. Let it do all its work and hopefully we come back tomorrow and all these bolts and nuts are nice and clean. All right, so after a decent amount of cleaning and prep work, I think these things are finally ready for some paint. First cut on that looking good. Let's move on over to the control arms. Looking pretty decent, I'd say. Thought I'd check up on the bolts for a second. This evapo rust stuff is doing work. It looks like it is so dirty. Like you can kind of see some of the nuts and stuff in there. They're looking clean, clean. Alrighty, I just laid the final coat on the underside. And all I have to say is that painting black on an already black part sucks. Especially with these paint cans, the VHT cans. I don't know if it was just the cans I got today, but they were just super inconsistent. And half the time I couldn't even tell if they were laying down paint. So I know for a fact that there are gonna be hella runs because I went way too heavy, I think. Alrighty, so it's been a few days. I got the bolts out of the rust solution. I rinsed them off and I've got to say, it didn't get all the rust off, but these bolts are looking a hell of a lot better than they did. So before I go ahead and throw in the front subframe, I decided I would go ahead and throw in the new engine mounts, but I was comparing my old engine mounts for the M44 to the engine mounts for the M52 and Condor Speed Shop has these two mounts listed as being totally different, but to me, they look pretty identical. Part of me feels like I'm being bamboozled, but I'm just gonna trust that there's some sort of subtle difference here that I'm not noticing, and we're gonna go ahead and throw in the new mounts. All right, the new engine mounts are on. I've decided I'm gonna put all this stuff back up just piece by piece. But look at how the paint came out. I'm actually super happy with how this paint is looking. I think the matte black looks a bit better than the glossy. Hopefully this will hold up and we'll keep any rust from accumulating over time. Oh, realistically. Oh, there we go. Oh, shit. 
82 foot pounds. It just, it looks like a lot from, cause noodle arms. Whoop. Nice. Take a look at how good the steering rack came out. I barely even like touched this thing. And I was, if I'm being honest, I didn't think it was gonna turn out very well. But this thing is looking pretty clean. Nice and snug. That's looking good. Boom, and just like that, first suspension is all back together. That went a hell of a lot smoother than I was expecting. Alrighty, so before we can throw this engine back in the car, we have a couple things that we need to get done first. One of those being the pilot bearing. This one's pretty easy. Just grab your pilot bearing. I already cleaned out the inside of this. Just kind of seat it in a little bit. And then I found that a 22 millimeter works best. It sits right on the outside edge of the bearing. You can just give it a little, some little taps. Alrighty, so now we get to move on to one of the fun parts, which is the clutch set that, that I'm gonna be using for this build. I went with FX Clutch. Um, I know it's an eBay brand, but from everything I've read online, people have seemed to have pretty good experiences with them. It's FX's stage three clutch, so it's a six puck design, uh, single mass lightweight flywheel. Oh, and here's, here's my favorite part. The pressure plate is red, so you know like, this is truly a high performance part. This should be a pretty straightforward install. Just gotta make sure you line up the dowel with the big hole on here. So normally you would want like a, a flywheel holder to be able to tighten all these down, but I don't have that. So my lovely girlfriend is gonna be holding the crankshaft pulley bolt while I tighten these down. And I'm just gonna go around and do these kind of little by little as we go around, kind of going in like a crisscross pattern. There we go. There we go. I'll tell you what, this is really annoying to do on a hoist like this. All right, sick. Flywheel is on. Now I gotta give this a quick clean. Okay, so I've I've been stressing like the last 10 minutes because I know that with these FX clutches, the alignment, like the orientation of the actual clutch disc is super finicky. Because normally, normally on a transmission, you have it so this bulge side faces out like this. And if I remember correctly, when we installed this clutch on my buddy's BMW, we did it like this and it caused a lot of problems. So I went online and started searching, but everyone's getting giving like two different answers and no one can come to a conclusion. But Gabe just got here and he has the FX clutch on his car. And he's telling me, I'm holding you accountable on video by the way, right, right here. He's telling me it goes like this. So I'm gonna trust Gabe and we're gonna put it in like this. Put that video on there like that. I'm gonna slide this video over. Ah, see that's how you know that it's in there straight. This goes in nice and smooth. All right, now, very slowly, we're going in a star pattern to yoink this bitty down. All right, so from what I can tell, these look like 8.8 .8 grade bolts. So I get torqued down to about 17 foot pounds. Hmm, that doesn't seem right to me. Online, where's the book? Did I really get these at spec by hand? There's no fucking way. Or maybe it's just my torque wrench. Yeah, good old Pittsburgh torque wrench. For 8.8, .8, it's 16 to 17 foot pounds and then 10 point whatever the fuck. This is 25 foot pounds. Yeah, for the 10.9 bolts. Fuck it, we'll split the difference. We'll go 20. Ah. 21. 
Well, I think these are already up to the upper spec bed. Now we got to prep the transmission. So I need to fill this up because I accidentally spilled out some of the fluid before. So I'll do that real quick. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, it just keeps coming. Cut the clip, cut the clip. <laughs> now that I got that over with, we can go ahead and put in the new throw bearing. Boom. New throw bearing in. Now we can go ahead and stab this transmission. Oh, oh. Why is it not doing the thing? Okay, attempt number 52. Oh. Oh. Fucking grab some bolts. Three hours later. Spider. Spider. Transmission's spider. torqued. I even got the extra little bolt on for the dust shield. It's time to get in the car. Tilt with the uh, load leveler. Hey Kaylee, do you want to be camera girl? I feel like that that's not doing justice. Let's, Let's push her in a little bit further. Alright, we're gonna trans tunnel a little bit. Okay, so Gabe, you have a very important job. Oh no, <laughs> you, you can you, no, you need to do that very lightly. I almost think we should take that arm off, the engine mount arm on that side. Good idea, let's do it. There, right, you're yeah. past the Yeah. Okay, so we'll have to keep an eye on where, where it's at just so we can still get that in at some point. But I think now it'll be a bit easier to get in. The oil pan's almost clear, but I think we're almost clear. Do you want me to pull? Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> You guys were holding hands. Oh, you were? Oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit. Yeah, it's coming down. It's clear. Yo. It's clear. Okay. So we've cleared oil pan on the front subframe. Because this engine mount over here is pretty much on. And we're good enough to be able to line this one up on this side. You ready? Yo. Yo. Oh. Oh. Good job, Jesus boy. Christ. Wait. Yo. <laughs> oh, That's fucking insane. We can drop the hoist all the way now. That's a pretty good looking engine. This is pretty good. I would be way more excited right now, but I'm just tired. But shit, it's in. It looks so good sitting in there. Like this engine turned out so well. I'm just so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> it's so nice. I honestly don't know what's gonna be in the next video. Um, I still have some stuff that I need to buy. Uh, for one, I need a non-traction control intake elbow. I need a shorter selector selecting rod for the transmission. Cause turns out with the six cylinder, it pushed back the transmission about like an inch. I'm hoping that with the adjustability on the drive shaft, I shouldn't have to change out the front half of the drive shaft still. Pretty certain, certain I won't have to. Um, so yeah, intake elbow, selecting rod, inline filler neck, and exhaust, and tune. I think those are the five things that I need Oh well, and brake lines. Six things. Six things I need to get this car driving, at least. It's close. We're getting close. I think that's gonna do it for this video though, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed. I go. I hope you guys are excited to see this car up and running, hopefully within the next couple weeks. But yeah, I hope y'all have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.